Now it's time for our latest feature from the tack shed to the clothes closet. Tack and Talks presents. Today I am standing at the Farm Progress Show near Boone, Iowa, in front of Nevada Joe. Do you suppose Nevada Joe knows that he's in Iowa? We'll ask the person who is handling Nevada Joe, and that would be Diane Purcelli. How are you, Diane? Good, thank you. Why do you have Joe's Heine facing the camera? Uh, you said you would improvise on that, so we're <laughs> waiting for him to come around to the camera. Nevada Joe is recognized as an American legend, you told me. Why? Uh, because of his heritage. He's a wild Mustang. He was adopted, and now he's in the Equine Society helping other people. He is the official horse ambassador for NARA, the North American Riding Handicap Association out of Denver, Colorado. Seems to be creeping out that horses are more than just pleasure animals, or in our case, work animals on the ranch, that now we can use a horse for therapy. Possibly we've always been using a horse for therapy, but we didn't know it. Now we have organizations really designed at using the horse for therapeutic reasons. Give, it, give me some examples. Correct. Um, therapeutic riding's always been evolved. It started years ago in the war and that, bringing soldiers back in the fields and that. Now an organization's been formed, NARA, and they now have centers across the country. And therapeutic riding is so viable in our society today because a horse's gait mimics a human's walk. So a person is receiving therapy while they're on horseback, not realizing that they're getting the therapy while they're in a session aboard the horse with their hor trunk muscles mimicking the way a human's walk is. And I've heard for a long time that it, it improves one's speech if you ride a horse. And now you're telling me we know scientifically why. It, it, can, improve, it can improve various skills, motor skills, speech skills, um, self-esteem, emotional, anything um, that you dream of a horse can teach you. So how do you actually take Nevada Joe out and accomplish these tasks? As far as the therapeutic riding, I go around and I do demonstrations for people and show them the ways that a horse moves, the, the leg movements, the way they're in cue with a human's movement, walk alongside of them and show and demonstrate specific uh, illnesses or that that may benefit spe specifically from that. And I understand that a little bit of mounted shooting creeps into the equation somewhere. I feel that there's a passion by somebody here. Uh, yes, uh, we do a little bit of the mounted shooting with Nevada Joe, who creeped over here for you. Uh, we do professionally compete in the cowboy mounted shooting, and now we, Nevada Joe partners up and he carries the riders, and uh, they pop the balloons by with a hand dowel rod for hand eye coordination. We shoot the balloons with our six shooters and pistols, and Nevada Joe, the therapeutic students, ride him and pop the balloons with a dowel rod and then the combined team total, and so it's the wild Dare to Dream shootouts across the country. And I've got to believe that, as in anything, when we're using people or kids in conjunction with livestock, it's a sense of accomplishment. At the end of the day, we've really done something, and I could see where that would be a tremendous aspect. Yes, um, any reward given at the end of the day just to get a horse to move a certain way or the touch of a horse that somebody may not have, experience a city kid or adult, everybody that's lived on a ranch or farm knows that they always dream of the horses and the theme with the wild Mustang just makes it more of an American living legend to us. At the other end of the spectrum you've got a, a mutant over there, Doc Holliday, a miniature horse that you put tennis shoes on. What's up with this? Uh, the tennis shoes came about because we can now take him into hospitals, gymnasium floors, and he's at the same height as someone that's in a bed or wheelchair, and he's not intimidated. Um, it's the same as the pet therapy. He's uh, been called a large German shepherd before, but he uh, fits the tennis shoes, and ironically, the tennis shoes are nothing special. They're from Build-A-Bear. Really? And we've seen, I've seen a lot of things about different pets, like dogs and cats, that go into senior citizens' homes. So you have found a way to use an equine to accomplish the same task. Correct. That's what I'm familiar with. So I've taken the miniature horse now and put the tennis shoes on him with the help of other people. And now we've taken that. We've go to VA hospitals, children's hospitals, and fundraisers for cancer and other activities and the tennis shoes just make where a horse may not get there his hooves won't scuff the floor so we go down the halls and the elevators. It's obvious that you have a passion in using horses to help and improve human lives. How long have you been doing this? Uh, we've been on the road now for the past four years. 
and the greatest challenge that you never thought about but has been a challenge to continue to make it happen? Uh, there's not a challenge. In my day, there's not a challenge. When I, with, with people I work with that, there's no challenges. I have a good life. The best success, success story that you can quickly remember? Uh, probably seeing someone in a session, a quick story, there's so many of them, but a session of somebody uh, saying their first words off the horse spoken that had autism. First words. Somebody who had, has never spoken before got off of the horse and began speaking. No, it's, a, it's said words during the session, um, similar to how someone would go for a regular horse lesson uh, with a trainer and rider, and you're riding um, a dressage discipline to your letters, and you're saying go from letter K to letter M, and all of a sudden verbalized, that student verbalized those letters. Don't the BLM horses get enough attention? You got to come over here and hog the camera. But Nevada Joe, what's the deal? You know, quickly, you should give a little plug for the BLM. One of the challenges that we as a nation have is that we have 22,000 BLM horses in long term care facilities. Obviously, this horse is a testament that we can take those horses from the Nevada range, whatever range they might be in, in 11 Western states, and turn them into useful, functional performance horses. Correct. Um, Nevada Joe is not just a therapeutic riding horse. We compete on him. My granddaughter will be competing on him at a barrel race in October. We team rope on him. We do the cowboy mounted shooting on him, not only with the therapeutic riders, but I compete on him if I need a backup horse. So um, they're viable horses. They're good horses. Uh, my horseshoer loves them. They're the best footed horses. They're sure footed, and there's just something about the Mustangs that makes them unique, and I don't know what that is. So many times we can find where people have impacted human beings in a positive way and always there's a common denominator. They have followed a passion that they have in life. No exception here at the Farm Progress Show, Diane Purcelli has done the same thing. Congratulations and it's a pleasure meeting you, Diane. Thank you very much. I'm Trent Luce from the Farm Progress Show 2008 in front of the camera hog, Nevada Joe.